Recently, the wife of Chinese Communist Party's leader Xi Jinping, Peng Liyuan, has made several high-profile appearances. This unusual phenomenon has sparked speculation about her potentially stepping onto the political stage, possibly becoming the second Jiang Qing. Mao Zedong's wife Jiang Qing was one of China's most influential political figures during Mao's later years. There's much debate about what role Peng might play in politics. Some speculate she may be promoted to a political bureau member at the upcoming third plenary session. Others believe she could become the next vice chairperson of the National People's Congress and concurrently serve as the chairperson of the All China Women's Federation. This is a national level deputy leadership position. Rumors also suggest Peng might take over as the director of the central office, overseeing Xi Jinping's security. Or even enter the CCP's highest echelons of power as Xi Jinping's successor. However, some commentators argue that Peng's entry into the political bureau is unlikely anytime soon, suggesting it goes against CCP norms and may only be possible after the 21st National Congress of the CCP in 2027. The opaque and volatile nature of China's authoritarian regime makes succession discussions particularly sensitive and speculative. With the party's interests paramount, on the afternoon of March 28th, Peng Liyuan met with representatives of students and teachers from the German Chinese Choir who were visiting China at the 35th Middle School in Beijing. The language style used by Xinhua News Agency in reporting this event closely mirrored that typically reserved for CCP leaders. During the meeting, Peng exhibited the demeanor of a CCP leader, maintaining a distance from others as if overseeing work. She was seated centrally, flanked by attendees during the discussion session. It's noteworthy that the report also described the surroundings, stating, "In March, Beijing is filled with the warmth of spring, blossoming flowers, and brimming with life." Peng Liyuan was warmly welcomed by teachers and students upon her arrival at the school. Commentator Chen Po Kong noted that, "Over the past decade, such descriptives in news reports have been exclusive to Xi Jinping." Reports from Xinhua and the People's Daily involving Xi Jinping often start with descriptions of the setting. However, these are never used for other leaders. Chen suggests that this narrative technique, designed by leading CCP ideologist Wang Huning for Xi Jinping to foster a personality cult and elevate his status, is now being applied to Peng Liyuan. This further fueled speculation about her imminent political debut. Just a few days earlier, on March 24th. Peng Liyuan, in her role as WHO Goodwill Ambassador for Tuberculosis and HIV/AIDS, conducted research on grassroots tuberculosis prevention and control work in Changsha, Hunan. She was accompanied by high-ranking officials, including the Deputy Director of China's National Health Commission, the Director of the CDC, and the Executive Vice Governor of Hunan Province. While Xi Jinping was also conducting inspections in Hunan, Peng operated independently. This news was quickly circulated by state media outlets such as CCTV and the paper, treating it with the same importance as major leadership activities. Peng was prominently featured in the center of photographs, surrounded by other leaders and department heads, highlighting her as the main character. Political commentator Wen Zhao believes that the title of goodwill ambassador for an international organization is typically used in the context of soft diplomacy. Peng's solo engagement in such a domestically focused role is both unnecessary and highly unusual. Without widespread outbreaks of tuberculosis reported, Peng's high-profile involvement in disease prevention and control appears to be a pretext for gaining public visibility. Prompting speculation about her potential political ambitions. Additionally, Peng Liyuan has participated in a series of high-profile activities recently. On January 24th, she met independently with the First Lady of Uzbekistan. This is a rare occurrence in terms of CCP diplomatic events. Last November, together with Xi Jinping, she attended the memorial service for Li Keqiang and positioned herself prominently among the other dignitaries. This is a contrast to her absence from earlier memorial services for leaders like Li Peng and Jiang Zemin. Though the inclusion of spouses at such events can add a touch of humanity, Peng's presence and prominent placement underscore her unique status. 
Furthermore, Chen Pokong observed that party media now places news about Peng Liyuan after reports on the political bureau's standing committee members, but before other political bureau members. For example, her news precedes that of Wang Yi, the foreign affairs minister. According to Chen, this ordering strongly suggests that Xi Jinping is signaling Peng's intermediate status between the standing committee and political bureau members, hinting at her potential political ascension. In the tightly regulated landscape of news reporting in China, particularly under the regime of the CCP, the portrayal of leadership holds the utmost significance. The hierarchy of coverage, allocation of screen time, and the language used in reports are strictly prescribed. Any deviation from these guidelines could result in penalties ranging from fines and reprimands to suspension or even loss of employment. Hence, the speculation regarding Peng Liyuan's potential political engagement is not merely hearsay, and might be a strategic maneuver, possibly a way to gauge public sentiment by testing the waters through media coverage. This could be a preparatory step towards her eventual entry into the political sphere. Commenting on the matter, Wang Dan, the prominent figure from the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests, suggests that there's indeed a possibility of Peng Liyuan succeeding Xi Jinping. Given Xi Jinping's authoritarian disposition, trusting anyone entirely seems implausible. Thus, passing the baton to a family member might be deemed the most rational decision. Furthermore, Xi Jinping's deep admiration for Mao Zedong, along with his evident alignment with Maoist principles, mirrors Mao's decision to elevate his spouse to a position of significant authority within the CCP during his later years. This historical precedent suggests a pathway that Xi Jinping could potentially emulate. Meanwhile, the renowned historian of the Chinese Cultural Revolution, Song Yongyi, emphasizes that Peng Liyuan's potential political involvement hinges on two factors, the extent of her ambition and the extent to which Xi Jinping deems her necessary. This analysis makes a lot of sense and aligns with the current circumstances within the CCP and under Xi Jinping's leadership. Akio Yaita, bureau chief of the Japanese newspaper Senkai Shimbun in his Taipei office, expressed his views on Peng Liyuan's potential political involvement from three perspectives during his political commentary program. Firstly, from a historical and cultural standpoint, dictators are inherently suspicious. When their level of suspicion reaches a certain point, they tend to place their trust solely in their family members. This was evident in Mao Zedong's elevation of Jiang Qing. A quintessential example is seen in North Korea's leadership transition from Kim Il-sung to Kim Jong-il, and subsequently to Kim Jong-un. Recently, Kim Jong-un has introduced his teenage daughter, Kim Joo-ae, to the public eye. Observers have noted Kim Joo-ae's frequent appearances since 2022, even accompanying Kim Jong-un at missile launch events. In November last year, she was officially bestowed the title of Young Star General, and in March 2024, North Korean party media hailed her as a guiding figure and a trailblazer. These developments strongly suggest Kim Joo-ae's role as the successor to the Kim dynasty. Yaita believes that since Xi Jinping consolidated power after the 20th Party Congress, he is likely to focus on grooming his daughter. However, it is also plausible that Peng Liyuan is being promoted now as a preliminary step. Secondly, considering the current internal situation in China, Yaita thinks it's an opportune time. Similar to Mao Zedong's late endorsement of Jiang Qing, before and after the onset of the Chinese Cultural Revolution in 1966, Mao had already sidelined Liu Xiaoqi and Deng Xiaoping. While his main allies were Zhou Enlai and Lin Biao, Mao still distrusted them and thought a third force to balance power. Jiang Qing suited his needs at the time. Despite their strained marital relationship, Mao and Jiang had a shared daughter, and their political interests were aligned. Moreover, Jiang Qing had nothing without Mao, so she posed no individual threat and would not ally with Zhou or Lin against him. Therefore, in 1969, Mao swiftly promoted Jiang Qing from an ordinary Communist Party member to a member of the Politburo. The current situation in China bears some resemblance to Mao's later years. Although Xi Jinping has established himself as a paramount leader post the 20th Congress, factions that previously supported him have been purged from the central power echelon. Figures like former Minister of National Defense Li Shangfu and Minister of Foreign Affairs Qin Gang, once seen as part of Xi's camp, have also been sidelined. 
Additionally, the rivalry between Xi Jinping's confidants Li Qiang and Tsai Chi is becoming increasingly apparent. Within the standing committee, Premier Li Qiang is falling out of favor with Xi Jinping, while Tsai Chi's influence is growing. Some speculate it could turn into a situation akin to Viktor Prigozhin and Nikita Khrushchev. Wang Hunin and Zhao Leiji are half-hearted allies at best, while Li Xi and Ding Xuexiang are deemed ineffective. Amidst the constant reshuffling of personnel around Xi Jinping, there's mutual distrust between him and his surrounding aides. They fear him rather than being loyal to him. At this juncture, Peng Liyuan is considered family to Xi Jinping. Sharing a daughter with him and symbolizing his authority, it's improbable for her to join forces with others against him. Thus, Xi Jinping's intention to propel Peng Liyuan into the limelight holds credibility. From the perspective of personal qualities, Yaita believes Peng Liyuan could play a better role than Jiang Qing. When Mao Zedong married Jiang Qing, other leaders of the CCP had already established rules forbidding Jiang Qing's political involvement due to her questionable qualifications and aggressive personality. Consequently, she alienated many. In contrast, Peng Liyuan is seen as more moderate, and her image among the public is quite positive. According to information received by Yaita, Peng Liyuan's influence within the Shandong faction and the wife's faction has been steadily growing in recent years. As a native of Shandong, Peng Liyuan is said to influence appointments and promotions of Shandong officials, particularly in the military, known for their loyalty to the CCP's top leadership. Her interactions with officials during private visits and research indicate that she may already possess recommending authority in personnel matters. Yaita believes that Peng Liyuan is an implied leader of the Shandong faction within the political sphere. Recent developments show that while factions like the Zhejiang and Fujian groups associated with Xi Jinping's associates are embroiled in internal struggles, the Shandong faction is steadily gaining influence. Within the Politburo, it's noted that the Communist Party Secretary of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, Ma Xingrei, is reportedly close with Peng Liyuan. Similarly, the current Vice Chairperson of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, Li Hongzhong, also shares a close relationship with Peng. Although both are registered as natives of Northeast China, their ancestral roots lie in Shandong, making them, in a broader sense, part of the Shandong faction. Especially among the recent promotions within the military, many figures hail from Shandong. For instance, the newly appointed Minister of National Defense, Dong Jun, as well as the commanders of the People's Armed Police and the People's Liberation Army, Wang Chunning and Hu Zhongming, are all Shandong natives. Turning to the network Peng Liyuan has constructed among the wives' faction, one notable example is Wang Huning a current member of the Politburo Standing Committee and a trusted advisor to Xi Jinping. Reportedly, his fourth wife was introduced to him by Peng Liyuan and is said to be a distant relative of hers. Reports from last year indicate that the wife of Qing Gang, Lin Yan, established a close relationship with Peng Liyuan, even making mooncakes for her, which greatly impressed Peng. Consequently, Qing Gang experienced rapid promotions underscoring Peng Liyuan's significant influence on Xi Jinping's personnel decisions. Moreover, considering Xi Jinping's career path, Peng Liyuan's role in fostering Xi's alliances and relationships might surpass public perception. Her contributions may have significantly aided Xi in cultivating allies and expanding his network of connections. In 1986, Peng Liyuan married Xi Jinping, introduced by mutual friends. At the time, the 24-year-old Peng Liyuan was already a well-known celebrity, while Xi Jinping, 33, held a relatively obscure position as the deputy mayor of Xiamen. Hence, Peng enjoyed higher social and institutional visibility than Xi for a considerable period. Xi Jinping's youth was marked by adversity. His family suffered during the Cultural Revolution, and he was sent to Liangjiahe in Shanxi for re-education. Despite being from a privileged background, she hadn't experienced much of the world. Consequently, he might have felt somewhat inadequate in the presence of a glamorous celebrity like Peng Liyuan, perhaps even overwhelmed by the privilege of marrying her. It is said that Xi Jinping later told Peng Liyuan that he fell in love with her on their first date. 
declaring, "I knew you were my wife within 40 minutes of meeting you." Xi was the first party leader to publicly share his love story upon assuming office. Hence, since coming to power, Xi has frequently honored his wife, showcasing her on diplomatic visits and public events, known for his love for his wife. In 2014, mainland China even witnessed the emergence of a sycophantic song called "Xi Da Da Loves Peng Mama," which became widely popular, extolling the relationship as mythical. Returning to Xi Jinping's career, he only became acting governor of Fujian Province in 1999, marking a stable entry into the provincial leadership ranks and positioning himself for succession planning. Before that, Peng Liyuan, as a military singer, had a more extensive social network and was more influential. She even held the rank of major general within the People's Liberation Army, giving her significant influence within the military. Additionally, Peng had connections in the film and arts industries, which greatly contributed to Xi Jinping's rise to power. However, regarding whether Peng Liyuan will quickly enter the central political arena of the CCP, different opinions have been raised. Political commentator Gao Xin, in his column "Light Night Talks on Zhongnanhai" on Radio Free Asia, highlighted a key consideration regarding Xi Jinping's political ambitions. While Xi Jinping is widely regarded as the paramount leader within the party, securing lifelong rule necessitates amending the CCP constitution. If Xi Jinping intends for Peng Liyuan to join the Politburo before the 21st CCP National Congress in autumn 2027. He must first initiate amendments to the party's rules and regulations, given that Peng Liyuan is not currently a member of the Central Committee. Furthermore, as outlined in the CCP Constitution, matters such as the election of the Central Committee or amending the party's constitution require decisions by the powers of the CCP National Congress. This entails that members or alternate members of the Central Committee must originate from the National Congress. Hence, it's widely accepted that Xi Jinping isn't likely planning for Peng Liyuan to join the Politburo before the 21st Congress. The situation post the 21st Congress is uncertain. It seems improbable for Xi Jinping to call for an early National Congress solely to include Peng Liyuan as a Central Committee member. Gao Xin highlighted that even Mao Zedong facilitated Jiang Qing's entry into the presidium of the Ninth Congress in early April 1969. Per the party constitution's procedures, this eventually led to her becoming a member of the Ninth Central Committee at the first plenum of the Ninth Congress. Political commentator Tsai Shenkun expressed to Radio Free Asia that although Xi Jinping is quite authoritarian, the current situation is different from the isolationism of the Mao Zedong era. Now there is a need for economic openness. Therefore, it still takes time to observe whether Peng Liyuan will become another Jiang Qing. Currently, those below Xi do not pose a threat to him, so there's no need for Xi to push Peng Liyuan into the limelight. Moreover, even if Peng Liyuan enters the Politburo, it's not certain she will have a greater impact than she does now. So, whether Peng Liyuan can transition from behind the scenes to the forefront. Becoming a political rising star that influences the entire political landscape of China remains unknown. Let us wait and see.